What's up guys, Baker here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about motion tracking um, 3D text and logos in After Effects using a plugin called Element. And um, here's a quick preview of what it looks like. So I'm just going to show you a, a couple tips here and there to make it pretty uh, realistic and uh, nice and stuff and how the basic workings of logos and text work and stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this comp real quick just for this tutorial. I go inside. Now you're going to have delete, delete, delete that, delete that, and delete that. Okay, so you just have this motion track uh, cinematic, and I got this camera here. So you can use Buju, or you can use um, a built-in tracker, or uh, the camera tracker by the Foundry. Just make sure you watch my tutorial on how to fix the orientation. If you use the built-in tracker, it might not look, you know, perfectly straight up or down or whatever. And I also have this uh, phase logo, and we're going to use this for the logo. Now, since this is really tiny, I'm not going to use the auto trace feature, which um, I can show you real quick do auto trace. Hold on. Delete the mask on it already. Let's go ahead and zoom in. If I go to layer, auto trace, it can uh, trace over things. So you can do luminance, you can do uh, alpha channel, um, but alpha channel is not going to help us. We can do luminance and it will trace it, but it gives us um, too many extra points and uh, there's too many curved um, endpoints so it actually doesn't look that good if it was a very large picture then I'm sure this would work fine but in this case I'm just gonna use my own pen tool zoom in even more and just go ahead and uh, click around these points really quick going around boom and of course you can always readjust these points at any time in the tutorial if your um, 3d logo or text does not look how you want it. Go ahead and finish. Okay. Now we don't need to uh, set to anything. We can just set it to none. That's okay. And just turn the layer off. Now I'm going to make a new solid. Call it element. And we'll find some element and apply it to the layer. We're going to go to custom layers, path layer one, phase logo. So this is going to use the mask path as an extrude object. So we're going to scene setup, click extrude, and we get our, you know, our phase logo. Cool. Now I'm just going to use a preset bubble here. Um, bold right here. Just reminded me of the, uh, come on, double click, there we go. So this is kind of what it looks like. Nice and awesome. Um, I want it to be a little bit, um, more in depth, so we go to this black layer. We can extrude it even more, but I need to offset it so the front is still facing in the front. So just mess around with your bevels till you get something you like, like this. Um, yeah, so we'll click OK, and we see our big text here. So what I'm going to do is go to Group One, go to the uh, Particle Replicator, and let's just move it around. So it kind of fits. It's a little bit too big, so we're gonna go to particle look and change it down. I'll probably do six. Let's see what this looks like. Turn the resolution down a little bit. Okay, not too bad. Maybe uh, move it a little bit left more and a little bit bigger. Maybe seven. So okay, so this is what we got. We're getting there. Now, a uh, cool tip that I kind of figured out. Um, there's environments that you can try to match, so you can change it to, you know, like a studio and you get different reflections and stuff. But um, for things like this, nothing really can match that, except if we duplicated our layer, renamed it to Frozen, and uh, freeze frame it, just somewhere in the middle, turn it off. Go to Element and go to Custom Texture Maps. Use that frozen layer. We can use that as its environment, and it'll kind of match up the um, 
reflection is a little bit better. So we'll go to this drop down menu, go to custom layer right here, and hit OK. OK. So now you can see you kind of got these cables, and you can kind of see the color of the sky in here. And as you uh, rotate around, you can see the reflections look. Now they're not perfect because you know, it's not equal, equal rectangular, but it does look a lot better and it matches the tones of your um, text in your scene. Makes it a little bit blend a little bit nicer. Um, I also want to do. Let's see here. I'll put multi pass mixer. We can um, boost up the reflectivity a little bit if it's not shiny enough for you. Now you can kind of see the reflection on the face here. Um, maybe the black a little bit more shiny. So I can go to this black texture. We can go down to reflection, turn up the intensity 100%. Now it's like super shiny, like, uh, like silver. So I don't really want that. Change the color down to like a dark dark gray okay okay and now you can see our text is pretty shiny Let's reset that now to use text just go ahead and make a new text layer call this phase baker obviously and um, doesn't matter what size or anything we'll just go to element go to custom texts and masks layer 2 is now phase baker now we'll go to scene setup and we'll go and just click um, our extrusion model right here, this phase logo. Right click and duplicate the model. Now on the second one, we can go here and do the custom pass, path from 1 to 2. Now we got phase baker. And um, of course you can adjust it how you want. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Except the uh, bevel is a little too high. So let me extrude that back down and just kind of fix the offset. Rotate this. And uh, something like that's okay. Fix it later. But I want to change the group from 1 to 2. So the phase logo is on 1 and the text is on 2. Click OK. Now we go to group 2 and now we can con control the, uh, the text. So I'm going to have it come up here put it in the front a little bit. The size needs to be way smaller, so we'll go to particle look. Probably like six, maybe five. Okay, back to the replicator, moving it around, phase baker, and um, now it's motion tracked as well. Um, the way I animated it is like this. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle when I want the uh, animation to stop. Right there, okay. Keyframe the Z position. We'll go to um, particle look. Go down to multi object enable so we can control each character individually. We're going to keyframe the random rotation and keyframe displace Z. No, scatter Z. Where is that? Scatter Z keyframe. Okay, so let's kind of clean this up a little bit. There we go. So we got our position Z, random rotation in the um, multi-object, and the scatter Z in the multi-object. Now we'll go in the beginning, somewhere, and first we will randomly rotate these texts. So you can see that rotating over here. Maybe zoom in. And then we're going to scatter them in the Z, and since they are kind of intersecting with our logo, just push this forward somewhere over here. Alright, so we get our letters coming in, rotating in, coming together, phase baker. And of course, let's easy ease, and boom. So, the um, tips that I want you to remember is pretty much this environment tip to make it match a little bit better. So duplicate your um, motion tracked cinematic and freeze frame it and set it as the environment map. So, looks cool. And I'm um, using a mask path to make a logo. So, if I wanted to, I can, you know, stretch this out. And it should. No? Okay, never mind. Um, never mind. Alright, just get. So, yeah, that's, that's what we got. And also, don't forget to turn on the 
motion blur for element. So it makes the pieces coming in a lot smoother. And that's about it. Okay, make sure you leave a like, favorite, comment. Um, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter if you have any questions. And that's it. Peace.